Okay. Um, so my name is Joe Neer. Uh, I'm from the University of Vermont, and I'm going to talk to you about Olympia. Um, I want to start actually by saying that this work was primarily led by Eveline Ngong, who's the first author there, and she did all the work. I'm just here to present it. Uh, she's from Cameroon, and so unfortunately the U.S. visa system is such that it's very hard for her to travel outside the U.S., so she wanted to be here but couldn't. Um, so this is all her work, and I'm going to try to do it justice here. Okay, um, it takes a minute to switch slides there. So Olympia is trying to solve a problem that I wanna set up first, okay? So we have secure aggregation protocols and we saw a few of these actually new ones just in this session. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of these now. And basically they're designed to add up really big vectors. For example, when you're trying to do federated learning. Um, some of them are designed to work for lots and lots and lots of clients. So some of the recent ones work for like tens of thousands of clients, okay? So the big challenge there that you know, we're trying to address is how do you empirically evaluate these protocols? Because you know, maybe if you work for Google or something, you could go get 10,000 phones and actually do an experiment and see how fast the protocol runs. Uh, I work at the University of Vermont, so there is no chance I'm going to get access to 10,000 phones or 10,000 uh, even Amazon machines to be able to run an experiment on one of these protocols. Right? So I can't run an experiment at the scale I want to with real hardware for some of these secure aggregation protocols at the scales that they are designed for. So what do people do instead? They basically, in, in the papers, they tend to give you this big table of like asymptotics, right? And they tell you, here's how we compare to the previous protocols. And this is just a selection. Um, you know, you could build a table like this that's probably got like 20 more protocols in it now. There's, you know, probably five or 10 of these at least, uh, new protocols every year. And the problem is they're getting so good that the entries in the tables are getting pretty close to each other. And in some cases, you know, there are improvements that are hard to quantify in the asymptotics, right? And so it would be really nice to be able to report real world running time for these protocols. How long does it actually take in practice? And like, this is the thing we kind of can't do. That experiment is impossible. So we're trying to address this problem in our work on Olympia. Um, the idea of Olympia is if we can't run the experiment, let's simulate the experiment, okay? So Olympia is a framework for simulating the kind of total running time and a whole bunch of other metrics for protocols that involve thousands of parties. And it allows you to do an empirical evaluation on these protocols, you know, on one computer uh, and, you know, do it on tens of thousands of simulated clients. So this is the thing that, that we built. So the Olympia framework kind of has two pieces. They're highlighted in orange here on the right-hand side. Um, it has a library, which is a Python library that helps you write protocols. And it has a simulator that allows you to do experiments on those protocols. And so it's kind of hard to see the, the gray boxes here, but protocol implementation and experiment configuration. If you're designing a new protocol, the idea is that you write those pieces and the, the pieces that we're providing as the framework kind of help you do it and the simulator allows you to run the experiment. Um, so the simulator runs on one computer. It uh, kind of models all the computations and communications of the parties who are involved in the protocol. And it runs each of those computations sequentially. And then after those computations run, it kind of uh, parallelizes them uh, after the fact, right? So it kind of simulates, you know, how long would this have taken if all of these things that could have run in parallel actually did? So I want to say a little bit about this library first. Um, so the idea is we wanted to build a library that would let you really quickly implement new protocols. And so this is an example of a super simple secure aggregation protocol. Uh, it's not one you'd want to use in practice because it actually doesn't work well for 10,000 clients. Uh, but I wanted to show you this to show you how short it is and also to show you these orange boxes, which are all the pieces that are built into the Olympia library. So things like uh, Shamir secret sharing, for example, that get used in a whole bunch of different protocols. Uh, we have stuff like for that built into the library so that you don't have to implement it yourself. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's all I need to say about that. Um, I want to show one other thing, which is this protocol is one you actually might want to use in practice. Um, and this one is also short. 
And the reason this one is short is what I've highlighted in the orange box there, which is you can have protocols that build on other protocols. So this protocol actually works a lot like the previous one. It's just aggregating a slightly different thing. And that means you can reuse the implementation of the previous protocol to implement this one. Um, so we implemented several of the kind of commonly cited uh, secure aggregation protocols. Uh, clearly, there's a bunch we don't have in this list, uh, but these are the ones that, you know, some of these are ones like, uh, you know, this one and this one, for example, are some of the original ones that a lot of uh, ideas for the, the protocols that have been developed since then come from. And we're able to implement these in a very small number of lines of code uh, because we build them on top of this library and because we're able to reuse pieces of uh, prior implementations. So one of the reasons I'm showing this is because the goal is the goal of the work really is on the right there in that orange box, right? If you have a new protocol that you think is better than all the previous ones, right? What we want to be able to do is to help you to implement yours in the same framework as implementations already exist for all these other ones. So you can do an experiment to prove that yours is better, right? Uh, and so we have an open source implementation. I'll show you the link at the end. Uh, and all the protocols that we've implemented as part of the framework are available also. So if you have a new one that you're proposing and you implement it using the Olympia framework, you can immediately do a comparison uh, against existing protocols. OK, now I want to say a little bit about the simulator. Uh, so the simulator basically is designed to allow you to produce graphs like this one. Um, it approximates things like the total protocol running time as if it ran in the context of a server and a whole bunch of clients. So this is a graph where on the, on the x-axis you have the size of the vector being aggregated, and on the y-axis you have total time. And the different colored lines in the graph are different protocols. And so this you know, a lot of these protocols have pretty similar asymptotics. You can see that in terms of the concrete scaling uh, behavior, they're all pretty much linear in the size of the, or they all go like that in the terms of the size of the vector. I don't want to say uh, something misleading about the asymptotics here, but, uh, you know, there are gaps between them, especially as the vectors get bigger, right? And so, you know, the constants, especially as the vectors get bigger, the constants really start to matter, and you can build graphs like this that show how they matter. So with some of the protocols that I showed you on the table with the lines of code on it, right? Um, we did some comparisons between these to look at kind of how do they behave when you're aggregating vectors of different sizes, when you have different numbers of clients and stuff like that. So this graph on the far left is like the one I just showed you. Uh, it's basically showing how the different protocols compare when we increase the size of the vectors. Um, this one shows how the different protocols work when we increase the number of clients participating. And this is going from like 10 clients up to about 120. And so you see some protocols are pretty much flat with the number of clients and other ones, you know, start towards the end of the graph, uh, start to go up, right? So those are protocols you probably wouldn't want to use with a larger number of clients. So the protocol you'd want to use in practice really does depend on the setting you want to use it in. If you have a small number of clients, you're going to pick a different protocol for sure than if you have a really large number of clients. And the one on the far right is where we tested very large numbers of clients. So the number of clients there on the far right goes up to 10,000. And there, there's only three protocols that we tested because uh, the other ones that we've implemented basically can't scale to that many clients. Um, and you see that there are uh, you know, differences in terms of the concrete performance in the protocols there as well. Um, the, uh, another thing that, you know, this is kind of a well-known fact that people have seen in these protocols for a while now, um, but, you know, we were able to test this and we were able to kind of compare protocols on this point too. Uh, server computation time tends to dominate the total time, the total running time for these protocols uh, in a lot of cases, assuming that there aren't certain things going on with the network that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so this is showing not the total running time of the protocol, but just the server computation time uh, for each of the protocols. And the graphs look basically the same, right? Like you kind of can't tell the difference between this slide and the last one. That's because all the kind of scaling behaviors that you see in these protocols, for the most part, are because of the server computation time, right? So that tends to be kind of the bottleneck in a lot of these protocols. So we also want to look at what happens when you have different properties of the network, right? So what happens if you have lots of latency versus not very much latency? And so 
Here we're varying the amount of latency uh, for each network message passed between the clients and the server between zero milliseconds, so absolutely the best possible thing you could have, and 1,000 milliseconds, so a second, right? Not great. And what we see is that, you know, in some of the cases, it matters. Really, these are kind of small enough total execution times that, you know, the latency is increasing them by basically how long it would take to send the messages for the number of rounds that those protocols run. And for the protocols that are kind of more complicated, uh, you see kind of a smaller relative increase. So latency is kind of not the bottleneck, it, it looks like in terms of making these protocols perform well. Uh, it's a different story with bandwidth. So we tested both what happens when you limit the bandwidth of clients and what happens when you limit the bandwidth of the server. And when you limit the bandwidth of the clients, the graphs that you compare are these small ones down here. And what you see there is that like basically limiting the bandwidth of the clients doesn't matter, right? And this is what you would hope to see because these protocols, most of them are designed specifically to reduce the amount that each client needs to communicate. Uh, the red bar here is what happens when we limit the bandwidth of the server to uh, one megabit per second, which is a pretty severe limit. Uh, but then the, the total execution time of all the protocols goes through the roof, right? And, and this is you know, an another thing that I think is well known among people who've deployed these protocols. If you have bandwidth limitations on your server, that's gonna be a major bottleneck in terms of the total execution time of the protocol. Um, and bandwidth limitations among the clients are not such a big deal. Uh, but this is kind of a piece that, you know, doesn't tend to come across in the asymptotics either. All right, so the final thing I wanna say is, uh, we have this simulator. We, I showed you all these results that come from the simulator. And so, you know, a big question you should be asking is, should I trust the results, right? Like, are they, are they real? If I ran these protocols on actual hardware, would I see similar things? Or are these results from the simulator just totally made up? And this is a question that because we don't have access to enough hardware to do the actual experiment, we can't really answer definitively, right? So we tried our best to get as close as we could to answering this. Um, what we did is we compared the simulator's results uh, on a smaller number of clients to what we see from the actual protocols running on real hardware for that smaller number of clients. So these graphs are for um, some of the protocols and, and there's graphs for all of them in the paper uh, running on 20 clients and one server. And so here we actually got 20 machines plus one machine for the server and we ran the actual protocols uh, you know, on all these separate uh, machines. And the blue line is the results that we got from running it on real hardware and the red line is the results we got from running it in the simulator. So there is a gap, for example, you see a gap here between these. Um, what we saw in every case is that the scaling behavior of the protocol was identical between the you know, actual protocol running on real hardware and the simulated version. So we can't definitively answer, you know, if you run a simulation for 10,000 clients, you know, is the, actual total time that you would get if you ran it on real phones is gonna be exactly the same as the simulator says. Um, there probably will be a gap. Um, what I think we can say is that the scaling behavior of that protocol as you increase the number of clients, you know, we have some confidence uh, that that's gonna give you an idea of how the protocol is gonna scale. Uh, okay, to do that previous experiment, and a thing that you could do if you wanted to run these protocols on, on real hardware, um, I showed you this picture earlier on the left, the simulation picture, where you write this protocol implementation on top of our library and then you can do simulations on it. Um, we also have a little piece of code that we call the Olympia Network Adapter that you can use to run the same protocol, uh, the same protocol implementation, so without changing the implementation at all, uh, to run it on real hardware. So I say deployment there with a star on the right because uh, this is not something that we've tested heavily, and it's not something that probably you'd want to deploy in practice. But the idea is that this is a prototype of a kind of layer that you could put in between our library and your implementation so that you could actually deploy it on real hardware. Okay, so to wrap up, uh, you know, Olympia is this framework basically for simulating secure aggregation protocols on really, really big numbers of clients, something where you would have a lot of trouble doing the experiment, the equivalent experiment on real hardware. Um, and 
what we're really hoping with this is that you know, people will find it useful for comparing their new protocols against existing ones. So we've made the whole framework open source. You can go download it here. And all of the uh, protocols that we implemented ourselves, for which some of them, you know, you, there kind of was no implementation available previously, we've made those open source as well. So you can find those in the GitHub repo also. Um, so I'll wrap up there. Thanks very much. And I'm happy to take questions.